Today in the smuggler's room, we're gonna mold and cast chairs for a piece of junk. And what a glorious piece of junk it is. That's coming up. What's up, you awesome geeks? I'm Brian, and welcome to The Smuggler's Room, the show where each week, this chubby geek tries to build something ridiculous and hopefully inspire you to take on your own wild and crazy project. Now, if it's your first time here, she may not look like much, but she's got it where it counts, kid. I made a lot of special modifications myself. So, if you'll just hit that subscribe button, we'll get on with it. So, I've got this friend, Greg. Say hi, Greg. Now, Greg has a little obsession. Now, I've talked about Greg and this crazy project before, but today, we're gonna scale things back a bit. One six scale, to be exact. You see, Greg has spent many of the past years recreating all the details within the Millennium Falcon cockpit, and now he's taking all that meticulous work and bringing it down to a scale that most of us could tackle. He teamed up with an incredible 3D artist named Izzy. Say hi, Izzy. <laughs> Now, Izzy's job has been to create amazing 3D creations of all the different Greeblies that Greg has been working on over the years. Like these. And these. And even these. These little, tiny switches. Izzy also recreated the iconic pilot chairs in both a one quarter and a one six scale, which is what you see here. And that is where I come in. You see, Greg was kind enough to ask me to mold and cast the chairs for his kit project, which we'll talk about later. And I was all but thrilled to be involved in any way with the project. As you know, 3D printing can take a good deal of time to produce a single object, such as these chairs, plus the amount of work sanding and prepping the printed piece for paint. So, for the cockpit, it just made sense to mold the chairs so that they could be more easily reproduced. We start the process by building a form, basically a box, that the master can sit in and the silicone can be poured around. Foam core is inexpensive and easy to work with. Just be sure to seal all the seams so that the silicone doesn't leak out when you pour it. It is really important to get the master finished the best that you can. The silicone picks up every detail, so if you have any blemishes, or in this case, print lines, those will rear their ugly little heads in your cast pieces. This is gonna be a two-part mold, which means that we need to clay up one half of the master. Finding out where you want your seam line can be the trickiest part. In this case, the chair has a natural seam line that runs all the way around the outside edge. So we'll be able to use that line as our guide for both halves of the chair. Now what I found challenging with this mold was the amount of silicone I was going to use based on the position of the chair. So if any of you have any suggestions of how this could have been done differently to save on silicone, I would love to hear your ideas. Once you have one side of your master clayed up and everything's been cleaned off, go ahead and make your registration marks. These will come into play later when you pour the second half of the mold. That way they align perfectly when you're ready to do your castings. Around here we finally upgraded our molding game by adding a degassing chamber. Believe me, going from the bombs away method to a degassing chamber is like switching from a tauntaun to a speeder bike. It's awesome. After we poured the first half of the silicone mold, we let it sit and cure overnight. Then we sprayed it down with release agent and poured the second half and let that cure and sit overnight. After that, 
You can liberate the master and you're ready to start making your casts. For the castings, I simply aligned both halves of the mold and then I placed a quarter inch MDF sheet on back and front. That way I could use a set of clamps and apply even pressure down the mold to give me a nice solid fit. Previously, I poured water into the mold and then dumped that water into a cup to see how much total resin I was going to need. Then I could mark out both an A and a B part in two separate cups, dividing that total amount because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Then all I have to do is fill the two parts in, mix the silicone, and we can start pouring it into the mold. When you're pouring into the mold, it's really straightforward. I do a little bit at a time, making sure to rotate occasionally the entire mold to make sure I get all the resin in all the corners and crevices. This chair is pretty straightforward until you get to the top, which is actually the bottom of the chair. That's when things get a little tricky. Because of the overlap or lip on the chair, you can actually create an air bubble, which if you don't get that out, you'll have a gap in your cast when you pull it free. So all I do is lean the mold back far enough to make sure I see the air bubble come loose and then I'm ready to finish off the pouring. Now this resin kicks in about 35 to 45 minutes, which means at that time I can take it out of the mold and let it fully cure for the next several hours. That way I can keep on pouring molds and I only have 20 more to go. When I'm done with these, I'm sending this mold to Greg and he can handle the rest. Good luck, buddy. Now, if you want to see more of the amazing detail that Greg and Izzy are putting into this project, then head on over to the What A Piece Of Junk YouTube channel. I'll leave a link in the description below, as well as a link for their Facebook group there where you can find out more details about the actual kit. I'm actually building one of these kits right now and we're gonna be sharing that with you really soon. I've got a space all picked out in the basement to put it on display and I can't wait to show you all of that. In addition, I wanna thank all of you who have subscribed to The Smuggler's Room and helped build our community. We are overwhelmed with the support and we can't wait to continue building ridiculous projects for you. So until next time, keep building something out of nothing. I mean, come on. Look at these little tiny rocker switches. They're so, they're so, they're so tiny.